What's up, y'all? I'm going to derive the Gibbs-Helmholtz equation. It's one of the most popular. It's short, and it's awesome. It's really great. It's not my favorite derivation, but it is really good. It's the one that's done in the Atkins textbook. I have other derivations in the description below, uh, but let's jump into it. So we're going to start off with something a little weird, but just bear with me if you can. We're going to take the derivative with respect to t of g over t, and we're holding pressure constant. Now, why we need to take the derivative of this comes is apparent later in the derivation. This is like the power, the product rule, where we take the derivative of two functions multiplied by together, where I know this is a divided by here, but imagine this is g times one over t, okay? So imagine that. And if we take the product rule, we do the derivative of the first function times the second function left alone, which is one over t, because we have one over t, plus the uh, first function left alone times the derivative of the second function, and now we're going to simplify this. And to do that, we need to figure out what this derivative is. And to do that, we use a fundamental equation, dg equals vdp minus sdt. I've derived this in previous videos as well. And we're holding pressure constant. So this term is 0. And now, since this term is 0, we're going to divide both sides by dt to get dg over dt, which is what I did right here, dg over dt. Now, these d's changed to the partial d's, kind of the curly curly d's, because g depends on more variables than just temperature alone. So that's why we had to change it. And that equals negative s, because after we divide by dt, we're left with negative s here. So this derivative is this derivative here, and that's negative s, so we can substitute that in. Now, we're going to clean this up a little further by merging these two terms together. See, we have a t squared here. Well, we're going to get a t squared here to find a common denominator. So we'll multiply the top and bottom by t, and then clean it up, top and bottom by t, t squared, and then we just kind of merge these two to make one big happy fraction. All right, now we're almost there. We're going to simplify this numerator. And we're, to do that, we're going to use the definition of Gibbs energy. And Gibbs energy, G, is defined as the enthalpy minus the entropy times the temperature. And the reason entropy is, or sorry, Gibbs energy is defined this way is that the change in Gibbs energy becomes a marker for spontaneity at constant pressure and constant temperature. I've kind of gone off the rails with other videos about this, so you can check that out if you like. Um, but we're going to use this equation right now for our purposes by rearranging it. We'll move this G to the other side, move this H to the other side. Uh, just like this, h goes to the other side, so it's here. This g goes to the other side, so it's negative g. And by rearranging this equation in this way, this right-hand side, the negative st minus g, that's the same as what we have right here. So we can substitute in negative h into this numerator, and we're left with negative h over t squared. And that's basically as, kind of as simple as we get. So in hindsight, the reason we took the derivative of g over t is that because is because it simplifies into this kind of this nice way. <laughs> I know not not yeah. You know, anyways, it works out. Uh, I do have other derivations, but that's kind of the most popular way. So now we can equate these two together to get the differential form of the gibbs helmholtz energy equation. Now this isn't really a useful form for us because this gives us the change in g over t, and for a process we don't care about G, right? We don't care about the Gibbs energy. We care about the change in Gibbs energy. So imagine we do this whole thing using delta G. So rather than a G here, we can take the derivative with respect to T of delta G at some temperature. And then this would be D of delta T. And this would be a delta T, delta T. This would be a delta S. This would be uh, a delta S, delta H. That's so we do the whole same, same steps that we just did to get the differential form of the Gibbs-Helmholtz energy, and this is it uh, right here. Now, this is not the most useful form, so I'm going to give you two more forms that you may use in exams. Um, so what we're going to do, and then I'll explain things about what this does and doesn't represent. So to get this into a more useful form, we'll multiply both sides by dt. So we'll just left with this numerator here, numerator here, and this this partial symbol, this d, funky d, becomes a normal d because we're no longer taking the derivative with respect to, to anything. Right, there's only kind of, this is like the one kind of composite variable. Anyways, uh, we have our dt. This dt is now moved to the other side. So we now have a, a dt right here. 
And at this point, we can integrate. So we'll integrate both sides. Uh, and we're going to integrate with respect to t1 to, uh, from t1 and t2. Now, we've got to be very careful here. This is not like the temperature is changing, OK? This is t1, so it's one temperature. And this is a final temperature. But during the process, the temperature doesn't change. So imagine like a constant temperature process. Imagine like a chemical reaction that's occurring at, temp at one temperature. And then you do the reaction again at another temperature, that's what this is comparing right here. So we'll integrate the process at two different temperatures. This right-hand side, or sorry, left-hand side, this might look complicated, but imagine this, this fraction is just like x. So this is just like we're integrating dx. So if we integrate dx, we're left with x from the final to the initial, although that's not initial, and it's not final, it's just at t1 and t2. So that's what we have right here, the change in Gibbs energy at t2 over t2 minus the change in Gibbs energy at t1 over t1 equals the right-hand side. Now I have this one in a box because this is the integrated form of the Gibbs-Helmholtz equation if the enthalpy change is not constant. So this enthalpy change could depend on temperature. So you may be given e an equation for what delta H is based on the temperature, or you may have to calculate that. Um, but generally, in most exams, we're going to assume this delta H is constant. And if delta H is constant, we can yank it out of the integral. We can yank out the negative as well. And then we're just integrating uh, 1 over t squared. Now, delta H does change with temperature. It's definitely not constant. But over a short temperature range, we sometimes assume that it is, like on most exam problems. <laughs> so if we do, it's constant. We yank it out. We integrate. Uh, we have the integrated form of the Gibbs-Helmholtz equation. This shows the variation of the change in Gibbs energy with temperature. So what's happening is the temperature is not changing during the process. So imagine we're doing the process once, like where, I don't know, m melting something at 25 degrees Celsius. So there'll be a delta H at that. Say we're melting ice at 25 degrees Celsius. There'll be, uh, and then we'll melt it again at, say we melt the ice at 80 degrees Celsius. Well, the change in Gibbs energy at 25 degrees Celsius compared to 80 degrees Celsius is going to be different. So we're doing the process at two different temperatures, and it compares what the change in Gibbs energy of one temperature is to another change in Gibbs energy. So what we can do with this form is we can calculate the change in Gibbs energy at some other temperature, assuming we know the change in Gibbs energy at another temperature. Okay. I've got lots and lots of exam problems on the Gibbs-Helmholtz equation, so you can check those out. Uh, thanks so much for that derivation. Hope it was helpful. And just note, i got many, 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 many other videos on thermodynamics and other aspects of, of chemistry, physics, and math. Good luck on your exams. I know that this is not the easiest stuff in the world, but if you hang in there, you can get through it. You can survive. See you in the next video. Cheers.